Meet Renny Barethi, Dunmer Nightblade, Delver of Dungeons, and Seeker of Fortunes. This is my character, and I just wanted to show the entire character creation process first before going into a more detailed description of it, which I will now do. If you would like to just skip past the long-winded explanation that's coming up, then go ahead and go to the next video, and we'll begin with the storyline and the first dungeon. And for those of you that want the details, well, you're gonna get them. So, let's start at the beginning. Race. I picked Dunmer for no reason other than I like Dunmer. As far as racials in this game go, the only ones that I'm aware of are High Elves with their immunity to paralysis, Nords with their resistance to frost, and Bretons, well, at least according to their description, they have a resistance to magic. But I did an entire playthrough as a Breton, and I couldn't really tell you if it made that much of a difference. It wasn't very noticeable at all, honestly. So I picked Dunmer, and I picked a female, and the reason for that is because, well, I just find all the male faces in this game to be pretty terrifying. So then we get on to the skills, and if you're familiar with Morrowind, then this whole thing will look not too intimidating, but it is a bit more complex. Instead of just major and minor skills, we have primary as well. It pretty much functions the same way as it does in Morrowind. I'm not sure if primary skills level faster than major skills level faster than minor, but I do know that class skills level faster than non-class skills. Now one of the things about Daggerfall is it has a lot of cool looking or interesting sounding skills. You know, it's got backstabbing, it's got critical strike, thematurgy, medical, running, jumping, climbing, swimming, and all these language skills. But it doesn't. this game doesn't actually have any armor skills, which would be the only detraction it has It's compared to, compared to Morrowind anyway. For newbies, I would just say language skills are for flavor. They don't really do much. Aside from that, it's all pretty intuitive. So I wanted to create a stealth-oriented character. I like the stealth mechanics in this game quite a bit, actually, which was surprising to me going in. So for my primary skills, I picked stealth which is my ability to remain undetected by hostile en enemies. Backstabbing, which is my ability to successfully get bonus damage from that stealth and critical strike, which just gives me an ability to deal bonus damage overall with my melee weapons or ranged weapons. But in this case, I'm going to be using destruction magic. Now, a lot of people will tell you to put your your uh, weapon skill as a primary and of course that would make the game a lot easier but I have to choose a skill setup that I think is more befitting of the character that I'm trying to portray so Renny is very frail very fragile not not a very good healthy constitution but she's very nimble very quick and extremely intelligent and willful so she was very easily able to pick up the subtle arts of sneaking and assassination precision strikes, and remaining undetected. Uh, she does like to use a short blade, as they are easy to handle, they're lightweight, they're small, so short blade it is for her primary attacking skill. And I wanted to play a stealth and magic character, whose major magic skills are destruction, simply because I love melting things with fire, or freezing them, or throwing lightning bolts around, it's just a lot of fun. I could have done archery, but I, I felt like destruction would definitely be more entertaining, more fun. And then I picked alteration, and uh, this this other skill was really a toss-up. When you think of Nightblade, you usually think illusion, and I very much could have picked illusion, but the thing is, the illusion skill in this game only encompasses like two or three spells, and they're all just similar versions of one another. It's just chameleon and camouflage and shadow form and invisibility and they're basically all the same thing and the best one is invisibility I think and it's pretty easy to cast so I'm going to be using it a lot anyway but I definitely don't feel like I need illusion as a class skill at all to uh, be able to use it effectively now I could have picked mysticism which has a uh, teleport and open locks which would have been great or thematurgy thematurgy is an another one it's got levitation, it's got spell reflection, that sort of thing. But I opted to go for alteration, and the reason for that is alteration has both resistance to magic elements 
and it also has paralysis, and it also has, most importantly, shield to negate physical damage. Since my character is very frail, I am going to be relying on mostly avoiding being caught up in any sort of skirmish. You know, I want to end fights before they begin, in effect. But when I do get caught in a fight, I'm going to need some sort of uh, protection, and I'm going to rely on alteration for that on this character. Now, while we're on the subject of magic, I see a lot of people recommending the usage of mysticism and thaumaturgy on basically any character, and that's because dungeons in this game might require you to have levitation at one point or another, and teleportation is basically just really, 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 really nice to have in this game. Otherwise, you have to backtrack through a labyrinthian dungeon and you might not be able to find the entrance, and you might be trapped in there forever. Uh, there are ways around that. You don't need teleportation. If you're good with managing and organizing a bunch of saves so that you always have something to fall back on, like a save outside of the dungeon before you went in, in case you get lost, then, you know, you can do that. There's also the possibility of finding magical items to teleport or levitate for you, and there's also objects in dungeons that you can click on to levitate, especially in the main quest dungeons. I know those are all completable without actually having a levitation spell on hand, I think. I'm not absolutely certain of that, but I'm pretty sure. My take on mysticism and thaumaturgy is add them if, if you want, if they fit with your class, that's great. If you use magic but you don't really want them, but you would like to have levitation and teleport, you do not need to take these as class skills. You can cast levitation and teleport just fine without picking mysticism and thaumaturgy. It's just that the uh, spell point cost is not going to go down since your skill isn't really going to go up that much. If you want to level from it, put it in your class skills. Personally, I'm taking mysticism and thaumaturgy mainly just for the uh, utility, but I'm also going to try to get them up to be able to use some of the higher level spells that they offer, because I find them interesting. The other magic skill that I did not include is restoration, and the reason for that is restoration can make you really powerful really easily. I would say the easiest build you can do in this game is just for your primary skills pick a melee weapon, pick critical strike, and pick restoration. And then you're good to go, as long... Well, I don't even know if you need the increased majory or not, but, you know, that's probably the most powerful combo you could have. As for the rest of my minor skills, I've picked Longblade, and the reason for that is I want my character to be a blade master of sorts. Sure, she prefers short blades now, and that's because of her frail strength. Her training and her background, she just always preferred the short blades just because they were easier, although... Although she does have knowledge of long blade training and how to increase that skill, should she ever desire to do so. As I mentioned before, my character has a frail constitution, not very healthy. As such, she needs to rest a lot. She needs to take a lot of time to heal her wounds. I'm going to be resting a lot, and so I picked the medical skill, which I could have just as easily picked the advantage of rapid healing in darkness, since you're always healing in darkness anyway which is tantamount to just ha having a really high medical skill anyway. To me, that kind of seems like you pick one or the other if you want. So since I already have a really high intelligence on this character and medical relies on intelligence, I'm going to go with medical. And for the same reason, I'm picking lock picking. Now, lock picking in this game is pretty much broken. You almost never want to pick it. I am picking it solely because I want the challenge. I would like to get my lock picking high enough to be able to unlock any door that I come across, even shops in the streets in the middle of the night so I can go inside and steal all of their goods. Sure, I could do that with mysticism and open spells, but lockpicking is one of the few skills that also relies on intelligence, and I would like that mo mostly for flavor on my character. And then finally, I pick mercantile because, hey, you know, it's nice to have, why not? I'm going to be doing a lot of bartering, and my character wants to make a fortune. Alright, moving on to stats. Now, the stats in this game function almost exactly like they do in Morrowind, honestly. Each one governs a set of skills, that is, uh, melee skills like Blunt and Axe will rely on strength for their damage. Shortblade would, and Archery would rely on agility. Intelligence would govern medical lockpicking, that sort of thing. Willpower governs all of the spellcasting schools and how successful you are in your spellcasting. Endurance gives you hit points per level, and it it affects your healing rate while you're resting. Personality affects your 
ability to interact with other NPCs, luck affects the drops that you find in dungeons, and perhaps your success rate with other actions, and speed is just how quickly you move and attack. Now on the first character creation screen, you can play around with the baseline stats, but then after you go through with that, you get to roll more stats later, and the way that works is you get 1 to 10 points in each stat randomly, and then you also get up to 14 more points to distribute at your leisure. If you hit re-roll enough, you'll get something great. And that's what I got there. My stat setup is really nice. I actually managed to get my strength up to 40, which is probably fine in the long run. It affects melee damage slightly, but also really, for me anyway, the main concern with strength is just carry weight, encumbrance. I'm not going to have a lot of encumbrance because of my low strength. Endurance I'm not too worried about. I know my character is uh, very frail in the HP department, but uh, I find it interesting to have a character that has a good set of clear weaknesses and strengths. Now let's talk about advantages, disadvantages, max hit points per level, and the skill advancement meter. Now, advantages, disadvantages, and the amount of hit points you have per level is going to determine how strong your character is, which is going to determine what this meter says. If your character is stronger, it's going to take longer for you to level up your skills, thus the meter will be higher. If you give your character more disadvantages and make them weaker, then the meter is going to go down and it's going to be easier for you to level up quicker. In a nutshell, these advantages and disadvantages give you access to a multitude of different abilities to choose from, such as weaknesses, resistances, and immunities to certain elements, special abilities like spell absorption, extra spell points, expertise in certain weapons, forbidden types of gear or materials, and then you got whatever else like acute hearing and adrenaline rush and athleticism and that sort of thing. There's a lot of room for flavor, and there's also a lot of room for min-maxing here as well. My main goals when choosing my advantages and disadvantages were a couple of things. First of all, I wanted to have my skill advancement at the fastest that it could possibly be. Second of all, I'm not too concerned with min-maxing so much as I am just adding some flavor, some, some meaningful choices to my character to both round up my class gameplay-wise and lore-wise. The most important choice I made gameplay-wise was the increased majory times three. Now this is extremely important for anybody that wants to be primarily a magic user, and my character is basically going to be 50-50 stealth and magic. The other advantages that I chose were immunity to poison and resistance to fire. This is for no particular reason other than for flavor to give my character a little bit more background. I also gave her Short Blade for the same reason. I just kind of threw Adrenaline Rush in there to have something else. I could have used Athleticism, but I don't think that fits with my Frail Constitution. Or I could have done something like Bonus to Hit Humanoid or something like that. But this is the one that I ended up deciding on. The way I believe Adrenaline Rush works is that when you enter a state of mortal danger, your combat abilities become heightened somehow. I don't know, that's what the description says. Let's go over the disadvantages that I chose. The first one, critical weakness to disease, is pretty much a, a freebie. It doesn't really affect the game difficulty in any way that I can tell. So if you want something to just lower your advancement meter, pick this one. You could also pick Critical Weakness to Paralysis. This will make it easier for your character to be paralyzed, but it's kind of easy enough anyway, and I kind of put this in the same category as the Weakness to Disease one, especially since you can easily get a cheap spell to pretty much negate any paralysis you might encounter, which is what I'm going to be doing. Now, the third Critical Weakness I chose was to Frost, and this one is Consequential. I wanted this one to be... I wanted to have at least one weakness to be consequential, so this is it. And hopefully this will make the game a little bit more interesting. The rest, I simply forbade some armor and weapon types that I want to be using, mainly because they don't really fit with my class. Chain armor is not the best, and it's noisy if you kind of think about it. I know you could say plate is noisy too, but 
because almost all of the armor in this game is classified as plate armor, I couldn't really forbid that. So I'm going to have to make do with dark colored plate armor for my Nightblade here. And I also went ahead and forbid blunt weapons and axes in addition to tower shields, and that's, that's everything. This advantage-disadvantage setup with the max hit points per level of 14 puts me at exactly the very lowest that the skill advancement can go. And that's pretty much what I'm aiming for. Now let's talk about reputations. Now there's not really a whole lot to say here. These five groups represent most of the people that you'll find in the world, most of the NPCs that you'll interact with, and adjusting your reputation basically just adjusts whether or not they're likely to react to you in a positive way. I thought my character might be more friendly with merchants and scholars because she's interested in trading and gaining knowledge in the form of learning spells and getting training and that sort of thing, but she's mostly reputable in the underworld being a miscreant, a thief, an assassin, a nightblade. And in order to balance that out, we had to be quite disliked by the peasants and the nobility, which will actually make up most of the people in this game that we'll come across, but uh, I'm fine with that. I think it'll be, like I said, a bit more interesting this way. After we're done picking all of those class things, then we get to move on to create our character's background or career path by answering some questions. Now these questions are chosen from a larger pool of questions based upon the types of skills that you chose as your primary majors or minors. In my case, I chose mainly stealth skills, so it's going to think that I'm mainly a stealth-oriented character with a little magic on the side, and the game is correct. Now, what I think is really interesting about this process is that not only do each of these questions and your answer give you some sort of consequence for your character, the game will actually take all of your choices and generate a written character background that leads you into the story of this game, and I think that's really cool. I always wished Morrowind had some sort of way to write your own little character background, you know, aside from the little custom character class description. Okay, so let's move on with our questions. The first one, what thieving skill have you been studying the longest? This one, like many of them, are just going to give you a simple little skill boost to whatever you pick, and I'm going to pick Stealth, mainly for background purpose. My second question is, what school of magic have I been studying the longest? Same thing, I pick Destruction. And then Expertise in Combat, same thing again, a little skill boost, I'm going to pick Short Bladed Weapons. Unfortunately, Long Blade is not an option on here, so you might not be able to always pick a skill that you can actually use or a skill that's in your class skills. As a child, your nickname was blank, and th these all have to do with uh, jumping, swimming, running, hand-to-hand, -hand, and climbing, I think. But I just pick rabbit because it sounds cool. You are friendlier than most with, and this is going to uh, give us a little tiny boost to a language skill, and also give us a little blurb in our character background. As you grew older, you received additional magical training in the School of Alteration. And here's another one that's going to boost a skill depending on what you pick. I'm going to pick Learning Economics because that's for Mercantile. Of all the disagreeable types, you have the most personal hatred for, and this is... I'm pretty sure this was just for flavor, but I'm going to pick Power Mad Robber Barons because the term itself is rather unique sounding. What motivates you into a life of adventure? Now we have one that's going to give me either a bonus to certain reputations or some money. I'm going to pick riches and that's going to give me money. And what god, if any, do you worship? I think this will give you a boost to that particular temple, picking their god. Otherwise, if you pick none, I think you get a boost to your reputation with scholars. And I don't serve any gods on this character. Praise the scholars. Now here's one that's going to give me a starting item. I could pick a Quarus to get some armor to start with, but it might not be the armor that I want, so I'm just going to pick Favorite Book, because books can actually sell for a nice amount of money. Next we have one that's going to give me a little bit of a disadvantage, a little bit of a weakness. Uh, 
penalty to poison resistance, penalty to magic resistance, penalty to my personality or something to that effect, a penalty to disease resistance. But uh, the one I'm going to pick, and this is actually going to tie into a little character quirk that I'm going to create for Renny here, and that is staying awake and alert. Ties in a little bit with her frail constitution and her need for medical skill and lots of rest. Once the character background has been generated, then we move on to rolling our stats. And I already covered this one, so we'll just go to the next thing, which is distributing a few extra skill points. We get to spend six in each of our three categories, and what I chose was to put my six primary points into backstabbing, because that's the hardest of the three to level. And then I put my six majors into destruction, because ditto. And then for the minor skills, I put those six into lockpicking because of the same reason. And then the very last option we have is game reflexes. And I always just choose very fast. I don't see any reason to choose otherwise. And there you have it. We are Renny Varethi, Dunmer Nightblade. Ready to go. The Daggerfall character creation process, while a bit long, isn't too bad. Honestly, my only real complaint with it is the menu system, which doesn't allow you to go back and make changes past certain points. So if I wanted to change my race, for example, I would have to start all over again, and that's just really inconvenient. But that's all besides the point, we're ready to start the game now. So in the next video, we will read our character background, watch the intro cutscenes, and get started in the first dungeon. Alright, I'll see you there.